Mother in heaven, um, I just thank you so much for this opportunity and for our group here. And I just pray that um, you'll just lead and guide me in my thoughts and words um, and that they will glorify and honor you. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, so I'm going to just be sharing a brief testimony about my experience and coming to understand the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and Christ dwelling in us. And I'll start by just giving a very brief background of how I came to my prior position on what it means to have Christ within you. And then I'll share how I'm starting to realize that there are some problems with that position that I held. So um, I don't want to, I'm a very detail oriented person. And sometimes I struggle with sharing of just sharing lots and lots of details. And I want to try to be um, somewhat brief. So I won't really go farther back in my history than when I became a father son believer, but I do want to share a little bit of history. Um, I think it'll be helpful. So I came into the truth about God um, in 2018. Um, it was actually an ac accident. Um, pardon? Okay, sorry. I thought I heard someone. No worries. Um, so like I said, I came into the truth about God in 2018 accidentally. I was actually searching online and reading a health article. And the website that I was reading this health article on had a lot of um, other articles about the Holy Spirit, about the Sonship of Christ, and the pioneers' positions on these doctrines. And I started reading these articles and I was very young in my faith and this was very new information for me, but what I was reading was very convicting to me. And even though I didn't fully understand it, like, you know, words like co-equal and co-eternal, those were new, that was new language to me. And, um, but the message was also very simple and it wasn't um, difficult to understand. So by God's grace, I was, I was becoming convicted quite quickly. And this website also shared video content from another OTG ministry. And through that, I started to see even more so how important this truth about God and the father-son message was. And I became very zealous about this truth. Um, and I still am to this day. Um, I still hold to this truth um, about about the Godhead. And so I started to spend a lot of time listening and watching sermons on the topic of the Godhead. And I became very familiar with some of the prominent YouTube ministries in our movement, which probably most of you all are very familiar with as well. So for several months, I did a lot of listening and learning <clears throat> online. And I had actually left my job at this point. So I had a lot of time to to do this. Um, so I was spending a lot of time listening and I was learning a lot. And um, this is what I was doing for several months. And I'm, I will, I just would like to say I'm very thankful for the labor of love and effort that these men put forth to reach people such as myself for the Lord. And it was such a blessing to have access to all these videos about Holy Spirit and the Sonship of Christ. And um, it was just a really, um, a really beautiful time in my life and just really mind blowing to like come into this truth about the Trinity. And um, it was just uh, really, really quite an experience. So during my early experience as a father, son believer, um, I of course learned the beautiful truths that we all hold to. Um, that, you know, the Holy Spirit is not a third separate divine being apart from the Son. And um, I learned as one true God believers, we take the Bible as it reads and that we simply believe the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of Christ, not someone else. Um, the Bible clearly states that there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And, and Paul says, um, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, this is kind of like one of the pillar verses in our movement. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. And, you know, Paul just later, he wrote to the same church in Corinth, he says, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And those verses were so, you know, just so convicting and just so powerful. And 
um, they still are <laughs> to this day, but um, so I was learning these beautiful truths and I was, I was coming into these truths. I also came to hold the belief that, um, you know, I, I held the belief that Jesus is a spirit and um, the spirit of the Lord, the Lord is that spirit. So um, I came to hold that belief, but I also came to hold the belief that Christ literally dwells in his believers through his divine spirit. So I was taught and believed that Christ is in the heavenly sanctuary, but that when you receive the Holy Spirit, his spirit travels from the heavenly sanctuary down to the earth and enters the believer. And how that happens is it's, you know, it's simply a divine miracle. And that's, that's what I believed like completely. And I wanted that. I wanted to have Christ in me. Like I knew, you know, I knew I needed him and, um, I was wanting to be filled with the spirit as every, you know, every Christian obviously wants, wants to be filled with the Holy spirit. We know, you know, we desperately know that we need it. So, um, I was listening to sermons and there also, um, was a distinction made about the living word and the written word. And, um, I didn't, I don't have like a strong, um, I, like I said earlier, I was young in my faith and I did not, unfortunately, I didn't have like a strong foundation in the scriptures, um, to work as a safeguard for me. So, um, I think at this point that was probably kind of a new concept to me, like the difference between a living word, like the living word and the written word. Um, and there was just this, in, in the message I was listening to, there was a distinction made. Um, and so I also began to make this distinction. And I was, I was influenced with the teaching of a literal spirit Jesus living inside of you. And I was totally 100% on board with that. Um, and I just, I really, you know, just prayed and, you know, I just wanted Jesus to live inside of me. And um, unfortunately, at the time, I was also becoming very unbalanced and confused about the position of the law of God. And so I had, I was just becoming, yeah, just very, um, very unbalanced. And unfortunately, in my experience, I started to go down a road of presumption rather than true faith. And I won't really say much more about that, but these, what I was, I will say what um, these teachings that I was holding to, they were affecting my experience. And, if, you know, at the time I, I didn't realize, I was, I didn't realize it. I was blind to it, but looking back, um, I can see how I was falling into having a presumptuous experience, which is very dangerous. So after the first several months of being a father son believer and doing all this listening and learning, um, which was really um, many, you know, many blessings came out of that. Um, the course of my life started to change and I started to do a bit of traveling in 2019, which prevented me from listening to so many online messages and um, I started to get connected with other believers, um, including my husband, who wasn't my husband at the time. And during this time, the Lord started to give me clarity and understanding about the law of God. And um, that was, you know, really needful. And also in 2019, I got married and my husband and I were very blessed to be connected with um, One True God churches. and. I was now with people a lot more. So whereas before I had a lot of alone time and I had just been a lot more alone in my experience. And now I was um, really blessed to have, you know, fellowship and connection. And I was now as a result busier. Um, and I pretty much all together, not entirely, um, stopped listening to YouTube presentations for a season um, just with this course of events in my life. And um, 
During 2020 to 2021, my focus definitely kind of shifted and I was not wholly consumed around the topic of the Godhead as my focus had been before. So my focus was now being more centered around um, more practical living, help in daily living, being in contact with other people, family life. Um, country living and serving. And after being misled about the law of God, I think it loosened my grip on listening to certain people and just lessened my dependence on um, listening to YouTube messages, which I I mean, YouTube messages are a wonderful blessing. And so I'm not, um, you know, discouraging people from listening to them, but we also need to have an experience of reading God's word, you know, for ourselves. And we don't, there has to be healthy balance there, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so during the season and from 2020 to 2021, um, I was just able to gain some more clarity on the position of spirit of prophecy, um, which was helpful. Um, Raul and I were really blessed. We got to witness um, the church we went to, we got to witness where in our church, there were differences of beliefs, but there was still a brotherly love for one another. And that was really, um, really a blessing to get to, to witness and experience. And during this time, it was really brought home to my heart that it's all about God's will being done. And even if there are differences in doctrinal beliefs, if we're all coming together to sincerely seek God's will and to find out what that is, there's, there's not a topic that we can't talk about. There's nothing we can't talk about together if, if we're all coming with the same sincere desire to know God's will. And to know God's will is to know his word. Um, that's where his will is revealed to us. And it just so happens that during the season of 2020 into 2021, around this time, um, Raul was starting to study Miller's rules of interpretation. Right. Yeah. So he was starting to understand these rules of interpretation and he was having um, a beautiful experience with that. And we also read through the entire book, Christ Object Lessons, together during this time. And we also read through Ministry of Healing together. And both books were really a blessing to our experience. I'd highly recommend um, reading both of them. And so then kind of jumping back, jumping forward a little bit, um, about, of ex about exactly a year ago, we were convicted to move back to the Pacific Northwest where I'm originally from. And not too long after we moved back here, we started joining with you all here at Indwelling Word. And um, right away, we were very blessed by the studies on the Three Angels messages. And Bill Cave had mentioned briefly at times about the Indwelling Word enough that I had a basic understanding like of what he believed about it. And we were somewhat familiar with Brother Bill just from, um, we had like back in 2019 or, 2020, or 2020, yeah, we had listened to, I think a presentation on the daily. Um, we were just kind of vaguely familiar with him from PHM. And then um, I think somewhere, I think in 2020, 21, 2021 or something, we had listened to a message um, that he had put out, but so we were somewhat familiar with him. It was, you know, it wasn't, um, his ministry wasn't completely brand new to us. So, um, so yeah, I don't exactly remember how we, we started joining, but we were, like I said, we were very blessed um, by the messages and um, they were just really, we were getting you know, just reaffirming our convictions and, and inspiring us. And Bill Cave had mentioned, you know, just the ministry name and dwelling word. He had referenced that from time to time. You know, this is why our ministry is named this. This is why we call ourselves in dwelling word. And so I was starting to, um, to understand what um, him and Priscilla, you know, believed on the topic a little bit. But however, I mean, it's been many, several weeks now, Several weeks ago, it became apparent to Brother Bill that we needed to study more in depth this topic of how Christ dwells in you, kind of 
you know, go into it more thoroughly. Um, and I'm very thankful for that because the verses and the quotes that have been shared over the months, this previous month, have been very helpful in my understanding on the position of the word of God and how Christ dwells within the believer. And it's helped me to see that Christ isn't separated from the word because he is the word and the Bible, they're, they're his words. And Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. And it's helped me to, like I had mentioned back earlier in my experience, um, I was starting to make a distinction between the living word and the written word. Um, I kind of had that in my mind and, um, you know, kind of making a distinction that, well, the truth is a person and it's true. Jesus is the truth and he is a person and the truth is a person, but you know, the truth is also the word of God and there's not a separation there. Like he is the word, he is the truth. He is a spirit. The, and, you know, Bill Cave made a really good, um, it really helped me when he simply gave the um, illustration with the, the geometry sequence and just understanding the connection between the word, the spirit and Christ and how they're equivalent and so, somewhat interchangeable. Um, Christ is the word. He also is the spirit that he said, the words that I speak to you, their spirit, their life. Um, and so it was really helping me to get some balance and some clarity um, on this. Now, currently, there is talk about these different positions in regard to the indwelling of Christ going around on Facebook. Um, and I'd like to share with you just a few comments that have been made publicly online to give you a glimpse um, of where people are coming from. So um, these are just, these are very recent comments, like I think within like this week, maybe. So um, this commenter on Facebook said, I used to write and receive letters when my wife and I were separated. So he's saying, I used to write and receive letters when my wife and I were separated, but much better than a letter is herself. We can and must have Christ himself by his spirit, we must internalize the living word, Christ himself. End of that comment. So this commenter is saying, you know, basically they're, they're using this to illustrate that like Christ's word is comparable, the, the written word is comparable to as if receiving a letter from someone where what would be better is having that person themselves. Um, so that's the illustration being made here. And the commenter, um, this commenter, um, the next, so someone after this person made this comment, someone, the next person that commented, they said the following. They said, we need the real deal. Um, that's all they said. And then the first commenter who made the illustration about the letter, he responded back and he said, exactly. So he was in agreement with what this um, other person was commenting about needing the real deal. And now I'm gonna tell you about three years ago, I probably would have been right there um, saying amen to these comments, um, very likely, but that's not what I'm saying today after having my eyes opened to this. And today I would tell you that if you have the word of God, you do have the real deal. God's word is very real, it is living, it is powerful, and it is how he speaks to us and communicates with us. And we can't separate Christ from his word. It just, it can't, I, I'm not seeing how it can be done um, without a negative consequence. So to our experience. So, and I'm, and Spirit of Prophecy confirms this. She says, um, this is taken from Desire of Ages. She says, when his visible presence should be withdrawn, the word must be their source of power. She's talking about the disciples. So any of Christ's disciples. 
And I'll just, I'll, it's very simple, but I'll just read it again. When his visible presence should be withdrawn, the word must be their source of power. So if we're searching for, you know, if we're searching for Christ outside of his word, um, you know, what we're told here that the word must be our source of power. So it's can be very dangerous if we're searching for an experience beyond and outside of God's word. And like I had mentioned earlier, what was happening in my experience is that I was falling into presumption. And there, you know, and I'm, I'm still studying all of this out, um, but we can't, um, the, I guess the danger that we fall into is we can't operate and move off a of feeling and impulse. And it's very true that the spirit of God can give us a divine impulse. Um, you know, you hear people's testimonies of this. I heard um, a testimony about a lady. She was, um, I can't remember entirely, but, you know, she was really wanting to hear God's voice. She was really wanting to like be connected to God. And she was at the grocery store and um, the spirit just really prompted her to buy some, a can, some cans of green beans. And she was like, wow, this is kind of weird. <laughs> like, but she was like, you know, what's it going to hurt? Like, no one's going to know. Like, and um, she just, she felt convicted and impressed to buy these green beans. Well, later on, she had some company come over and it was <laughs> the mom, I don't, she was going to serve them food or something and something along these lines. And um, the mom was like, this is really weird, but like my daughter, like all she'll eat right now is green beans. Like that's all she wants is green beans. And she had these, you know, these green beans, like God had convicted her to buy these green beans. And um, now she had this, this girl was there and that was like, all she wanted was green beans. And, um, you know, it's like, or I've heard a testimony, someone just felt convicted to go home and they went home and their wife really needed them. And there are these, you know, the spirit can lead us. Um, Bill Cave had shared a testimony where he, you know, went outside and um, William was about to get in his little car and go down their porch or something. I can't remember the details, but, you know, I've had an experience where I just like, all of a sudden I went and did something and like I really had needed to go do what I needed to do. I can't share the details of it um, just because it's personal, but like, you know, these um, by these are more extraordinary experiences. And um, I do want to share a personal testimony, um, you know, because we're talking about the word of God, how he dwells in us, which is how he speaks to us. And I think everyone here, like probably, I know I have, it's just like so many times in our life, we're like, oh, I just wish God would just tell me what to do audibly. Like, just give me a word, tell me, show, you know, and we just, we want, like all of us want to hear from God. We want him to speak to us. And, you know, the Bible's clear that we have a more sure word of prophecy that he does, he is speaking to us. If your Bible is open and you are reading it in faith, he is speaking to you. And one time in my life, um, I believe I heard a voice from heaven and it really kind of caught me off guard. Um, that was one time in my entire life. And I can't even like, I'm, I've, I've shared that with very, very few people. Um, I've never shared that testimony publicly. And it was one word that I heard audibly. And I even remember when it happened, I kind of like made myself acknowledge it because I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to like question whether that really happened or not. And, you know, it's true. Like I'm even kind of hesitant to share that testimony because I'm like, did that happen the way I remember? Am I remembering that correctly? And when we have the word of God, the written word of God, we don't have, we don't have to question anything. We don't have, there, there's no question. This is 100% truth. And so we don't have to, 
um, have any instability or question about it. Now, when it comes to feelings and impulses, um, we can be deceived and we can be led astray and we can't trust our feelings and we can't trust our impulses. And, um, you know, I, I know in, in my past experience, I would be, you know, praying and I would get some really not the greatest ideas. And I'm just thankful for God's mercy. Um, he was just so merciful to me, but, um, I was really acting out in presumption and, um, it wasn't a very good witness to the people around me. And, um, there was even someone in my family had made the comment, you know, just like that I wasn't using very good, uh, you know, well, they didn't make the comment like that. So they were just, you know, questioning. <laughs> I was, I wasn't, you. I wasn't using good judgment and they were, you know, questioning that it was, you know, not wise to be doing what I was doing and it wasn't, but, you know, I was just like, oh, they just don't have faith and they, you know, they don't understand and they don't have faith. But really looking back, I was like, you know, I was being presumptuous and I was not, um, I was not living by the word of God necessarily. Um, and like I said, God was very merciful to me through it. And he, he took care of me and I'm very really thankful for that. But um, another quote that I would like to share um, as we're, you know, just sharing about as my understanding about the life of Christ and the indwelling of Christ has enri enriched um, uh, also in Desire of Ages. Um, she says, the life of Christ that gives life to the world is in his word. So, you know, as one true God believers, we come into this truth and we realize that, you know, that it's, it's Jesus. Jesus is, you know, it's his spirit and it's his life and his spirit. And it is, you know, amen to that. But she says here, the life of Christ that gives life to the world is in his word. Um, and so if you want the life of Christ living within you, which we all do, um, we can find it in his word. And that's very comforting and very, it, it's very um, securing, a, a very secure feeling because it's, um, you know, the, if you're familiar with the hymn, How Firm a Foundation, such a beautiful hymn. And um, just, I just recently in the last year and a half or so, I, I came to learn that hymn and it is a firm foundation where our feelings and our impulses um, are not always a firm foundation. Um, they're not, you know, we're counseled that the scriptures are our safeguard. And Revelation 14, 12, a verse we're all familiar with, Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And, you know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this faith that Jesus had, this, the faith of Jesus is living by the word of God. Because if you look at his experience in the wilderness, every single temptation he was faced with, he met with scripture. That was the faith that he lived by, was from the word. Um, so as this topic is becoming more and more talked about, um, I think it's a great thing. I think it needs to be talked about. Um, I'm really glad it's been brought up because it's really helped me and it's, um, it does have an impact in, on our experience. Um, and I was very blessed when brother Bill and several messages ago, he brought out the point of following these teachings, following them out to their logical conclusions. And I do not have a great history in my life of following things out to their logical conclusions. That's not a strong area in my life. Um, but it, you know, when he talked about it and he talked about following some of these teachings out to their logical conclusions, it gets you thinking and um, my concern with the teaching of a literal spirit Jesus living inside of you 
is that it leads to infallibility because if you have a divine being living inside of you, um, you know, what's stopping you from believing that you are a divine being? Um, and so I've just kind of wrestled with some of those questions a bit. And I, I'm still, like I said, I'm still trying to understand all this and um, put the pieces together. And um, I have in my own experience, I've, there are some things that I've certainly seen more clearly. Um, and there's also some elements of mystery that I, you know, we can't fully understand and discern um, the nature of God, uh, of the spirit of God. So, you know, there are, there are some levels of mystery and, um, you know, there's a lot more that could be said about that. So, um, but yeah, so, and just also learning too about like the Holy Flesh movement. I think that is a new, I don't think I really knew about that before. Um, at least not, uh, yeah, I was not very familiar with that before. So, um, you know, just seeing that, you know, yes, even though people, not all of us are taking, taking this, this belief of Jesus literally dwelling inside of you, even though we're not taking it to some of these extreme conclusions that people are taking it to, um, it's, it's still the same. We're still starting at the, at the same belief. So it's kind of, um, I've just been awakened to, to those dangers. And so I, I guess my appeal also is just for people to, um, to study it out and to continue to just search and read and pray and just, um, you know, pray for God to lead you and guide you into all truth. And, um, yeah, another thing that I'll share briefly as, um, you know, cause there's a lot of, you know, there's different, and I don't have all, I, I don't have all the answers. I don't even have a whole lot of the answers. Um, I don't have any answers actually. God has all the answers, but, um, you know, a friend of mine brought up a really interesting point. He said, you know, if we can be possessed by an evil spirit, like, you know, if we can be possessed by an evil spirit, it would make sense that we can be possessed by a Holy Spirit. And I hadn't thought about that. Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, you know, that, that makes sense. But um, we also have to understand how God, his character and how he operates. And God never takes away our free choice, our free will. And I remember telling my friend, years ago, I just remember I was talking to her and I was like, you know, I'm like, sometimes I just wish God would just take away my free will, like just take it away, take over and just you be in control and you like do your thing. Right. And I think that with this doctrine of teaching Christ, literally like is literally living inside of you. Um, I think that doctrine was enticing to me because I wanted that. Like, I just was like, you come in and you take over. Um, and it's, it's good to, you know, it's good to want that. It's good to realize our need for Christ and to realize that, you know, we're not, there's no goodness inside of us. And, you know, it's good to want his leading and his guiding and his help. Um, but listen to David, David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And he said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So by hiding the word of God in our heart, we are hiding Christ in our heart and it will lead and guide us. Um, but, you know, you think about when someone's possessed with an evil spirit and they just have like no, con sometimes this happens, you know, um, if someone's possessed and they have no control over their body or their movements. I've even heard of one gal, she like, bit was biting someone and like couldn't let go and um just that you know does God I guess my question is does God work like that like he doesn't come in and take away our free will that would turn us into you know just like a robot if he just came in and we no longer had um 
choice in the matter. And so, you know, in Isaiah, he says, come, let us reason together. And so, um, you know, I think I'm very, I'm very excited um, and I'm very comforted looking into my future experience, just praying that God will lead me with his word and that I can be sure and safe and rooted in my experience and my convictions because they're if they're completely backed by the word of God and I don't feel any less connected from Christ believing this now um I think that might be a concern for some people um because we don't want to by uplifting the word of God we're not demoting it's not demoting is that a word yeah demoting Jesus like it's not taking away from Christ because they can't be separated. So, um, you know, I think that is a concern. And of course, obviously we don't, um, it's a legit concern. We don't want to be, you know, um, demoting Jesus in any way, but uplifting the word of God is not, it's doing quite the opposite. It is promoting Jesus and um, it's going to deepen our connection with Christ. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. Those are just some, I kind of went, um, kind of just off talking a little bit more than what I had planned there. So I guess to just wrap it up all together. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to share some of my experience of what I've believed in the past and just, you know, how God has led me and how, um, you know, I'm just very, um, very confident and very, in his word, I'm very confident in his word, and that um, I don't think there's any danger in uplifting the word of God. And I think when we try to separate um, Christ from his word, I think it's very dangerous, and I don't think it leads us closer to him. I think it actually um, leads us further away from him, and we don't any any teaching, any doctrine that is going to lessen our grip on the word um, is not safe. So if, you know, we just help, we all have to examine our, ourselves and our experience and, um, just, you know, see how, what we believe, you know, examine how it's impacting us. And I'm very thankful because, um, what I've been learning about the indwelling word is helping me to understand more the importance of the word and, um, that the difference between ordinary and extraordinary experiences and, um, really the ordinary experiences are really extraordinary. 